all the players in NBA history, only 11 of them have career averages of 20 points and 10 rebounds per game. And none of them have come even close to averaging the 6.5 assists per game that Larry Bird dished out. With four NBA titles to his name and over 140 playoff games played with career averages of 27 points, five rebounds, and six assists a game, there was some chatter before last year's NBA Finals against the Boston Celtics that he couldn't come through on the biggest stage. But in that series, he shut all of his critics up, averaging nearly 31 points, six rebounds, and five assists a game, catapulting himself into the conversation as a top 10 player ever to play the game of basketball. People can question the validity of Kevin Durant's two titles all they want because he joined an already loaded Golden State Warriors squad, and that is completely fair. But let's not forget, this guy is an otherworldly offensive talent with insane efficiency numbers. In his first finals MVP run, he averaged nearly 35 points a game on 50-40-90 splits. For his career, the Slim Reaper has played over 160 playoff games, averaging nearly 30 points, 8 rebounds, and 4 assists a game. Rarely in sports do you have a player with a 100% approval rating that everybody is cheering for to succeed, but that's exactly what happened with Dirk in 2011. He put together one of the greatest individual playoff runs in the history of basketball. He willed the Dallas Mavericks to their first and only NBA championship beating the Miami Heat led by LeBron James in six games. Before that playoff run, he was considered a playoff choker. And now, he is considered one of the greatest playoff performers in the history of the NBA. During that run, he shot nearly 46% from three and 94% from the free throw line. Sure, the 2006 NBA Finals felt rigged after the Dallas Mavericks went up two games to none and Dwayne Wade shot more free throws the rest of the series than the entire Mavericks team combined. But he still had to deliver at the line and deliver he did for the series. He averaged 35 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists, and 3 steals a game. Couple that with his runs with the Heatles and LeBron James and Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade, without a doubt, is one of the greatest playoff performers in the history of the NBA. Elgin Baylor's rookie year with the Minneapolis Lakers, the team plane crashed into a cornfield in Iowa, and miraculously, everybody survived. And then his final year in the NBA with the Los Angeles Lakers, he retired midseason due to knee issues. Up until that point, he had been to eight NBA Finals and was 0-8. And that year, the Lakers went back to the NBA Finals without him and won. So Elgin Baylor retired without winning an NBA championship. But regardless, he still goes down as one of the greatest playoff performers in the history of the league. Case in point, 1962 NBA Finals against the Boston Celtics. Series tied 2-2. Game 5, he dropped 61 points and 22 rebounds in a victory. And then Game 7, they go on to lose by 3 points. But Elgin Baylor had 41 points and 22 rebounds. So, despite not winning a championship, this guy was always a performer at the highest level. During the Milwaukee Bucks 2021 NBA Championship run, Giannis averaged nearly 30 points, 13 rebounds, and 5 blocks a game for the playoffs. In the NBA Finals, he became one of two players ever to have back-to-back 40-10 and 10 games joining Shaq. And in Game 6, the closeout game, he had 50 points, 14 rebounds, and 5 blocks. He joined Hakeem Olajuwon and Michael Jordan as one of three players ever to win a regular season MVP, a finals MVP, and a defensive player of the year trophy in their careers. I think Kawhi Leonard's greatness is best defined by that one season in Toronto. Don't underestimate how tough it is to get acclimated to a new team and a new system, let alone perform at the level that he did. For those playoffs, he averaged nearly 30 points a game and 9 rebounds. Couple that with the 2014 NBA Finals run where he won a title and a Finals MVP by locking up LeBron James. It would be a miracle, but if Kawhi Leonard came back healthy and won a third title and a third Finals MVP, he would join LeBron James as one of two players ever to do that with three different franchises. Hakeem Olajuwon is one of three players ever to average 25 points, 11 rebounds, three assists, and three blocks per game for an entire postseason run. The other two, 
Tim Duncan, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. But Hakeem, he is the only player in the history of the NBA to have those averages for his postseason career. This guy very well could have been much higher on this list, but I am dinging him a little bit because his only two championships came when Michael Jordan was retired from basketball and playing baseball. But I have a feeling that even the greatest player ever to play the sport wasn't stopping Hakeem during his 1994 run because this guy was on a different planet. Wilt Chamberlain helped carry his teams to six NBA Finals appearances, winning two of them, 1967 with the Philadelphia 76ers and 1972 with the Los Angeles Lakers. But what's really hurting his case for being higher on this list is his matchups with Bill Russell. They met in the postseason eight times, and Bill Russell beat Wilt Chamberlain's teams seven of those eight times. Couple it with a Game 7 against the Boston Celtics in 1969, where they lost by two points. And Wilt Chamberlain in the fourth quarter of that game, he went out with an injury. And during that injury time, the Lakers came storming back, and Wilt Chamberlain tried to go back in the game, but his coach benched him. And afterwards... Bill Russell questioned Chamberlain's heart. So even though the stats might suggest he deserves to be higher on this list, those things work against him and he's tied for 12th. Don't let Jerry West's one and eight record in the NBA Finals fool you. This guy was a flat out winner. You don't make it to nine NBA Finals unless you were an awesome playoff performer. I mean, his nickname was Mr. Clutch. He is the logo of the NBA for Christ's sake. He remains the only player in league history to win a finals MVP on a losing team. 1969, he was 30 years old. He averaged 38 points and seven assists a game in the seven game series lost to the Boston Celtics. And in that game seven, they lost by two points. Jerry West had 42 points, 13 rebounds, and 12 assists. Scottie Pippen played 17 seasons in the NBA. He made the postseason in 16 of those years. The only year he did it was his final season in the NBA when he returned to the Chicago Bulls during a rebuild and he only played 32 games. He is the ultimate sidekick. If it wasn't for him, Michael Jordan doesn't sniff six NBA Finals, let alone winning six titles. This guy is second all-time in postseason history in steals next to LeBron James. And the one year without Michael Jordan, he finished third in the MVP voting and was one game away of leading the Bulls to the Eastern Conference Finals, a round he went to in nine of his 16 postseason appearances. Of all the players in NBA history, only 11 of them have career averages of 20 points and 10 rebounds per game, and none of them have come even close to averaging the 6.5 assists per game that Larry Bird dished out. From 1981 to 1986, this guy was the best player in the NBA. He led the Boston Celtics to three NBA championships. He had three straight regular season MVPs, and he won two Finals MVPs. He could do it all. He could score in volume. He could clean up the glass. He could dish to opponents. And he was a very underrated defender. Winning eight NBA titles in 16 seasons isn't too bad, but an 8 0 record in the NBA Finals is absolutely ridiculous. This guy accumulated a 31 and 16 career record in NBA Finals games. And sure, six of those championships came with the great Bill Russell by his side, but the 74 and 76 championship, Honda was the star of the show. And 1974 was particularly impressive. For that postseason run, he averaged 27 points, six and a half rebounds, and six assists per game. Shaquille O'Neal is the most physically dominant player in the history of the NBA. All due respect to Will Chamberlain, but this guy, he was going up against all-time defensive great big men and making them look like children. Alonzo Mourning, David Robinson, Dikembe Mutombo, none of them could stop Shaq. And from 2000 to 2002, this guy was an absolute beast with the Lakers. For those playoff runs, he averaged 30 points, 15 rebounds, and two and a half blocks a game while leading the league in PER efficiency rating. Kobe Bryant won over 75% of his playoff series, 33 and 10 in playoff series. Overall, 135 and 85. In the NBA Finals, he had a career record of 23 and 14 and was 5 and 2 in the NBA Finals. So, yeah, Kobe Bryant. 
one of the greatest playoff performers ever in the history of the NBA. Nine of Magic Johnson's 13 playoff appearances ended with his team going to the NBA Finals. He won five of them. He was forced to retire from basketball at the age of 32, in the prime of his career, one year after making the NBA Finals. He is still the only rookie in the history of the NBA to win a Finals MVP when he was just 20 years old. And in that Game 6 closeout against the Philadelphia 76ers, he had 42 points, 15 rebounds, and 7 assists. His age 35 playoff run, he averaged 35 points, 9 rebounds, and 9 assists a game. For context, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, his only peer when it comes to longevity in basketball history, his age 35 playoff run, he averaged 20 points and 8 rebounds a game. LeBron, coming back from 3-1 against the 73-win Golden State Warriors, that is his masterpiece. Making 8 straight NBA Finals appearances, that is absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous. Where he gets docked here in the NBA Finals, he is just 22 and 33 overall, winning four of the 10 series he's played in. Having played the third most playoff games in the history of the NBA, Tim Duncan very easily could have been 6 and 0 in the NBA Finals. Had it not been for a rare coaching error by Greg Popovich, leaving him on the bench when his team needed a rebound. He has five championships under his belt, and there's not a single player that has evolved as much in their career as Tim Duncan did. He started off as the young prodigy and the sidekick to the Admiral, evolved into the greatest player in the world, and then at the end of his career was an overqualified role player to the point that Tony Parker actually won a finals MVP over him. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar checks off all the boxes for a great NBA playoff performer. Longevity, 237 career playoff games. That's fifth most all-time, winning at the highest level. He made 10 NBA Finals appearances, winning six of them, putting up stats. They speak for themselves, but they would be even higher if his final 29 games in the postseason, when he was in his 40s, he averaged just 12.5 points and 4.7 rebounds per game. Michael Jordan was 6-0 in the NBA Finals in his career with not a single one of those series going more than six games. Of his 37 career playoff series, he had a 30-7 record with only three of them going to a Game 7. And oh, by the way, no player in NBA history has averaged more points per game for their career in the regular season or the postseason than Michael Jordan has. Bill Russell was 21-0 and in winner-take-all games throughout his college and NBA career. He played 13 seasons in the league. He made 12 NBA Finals, winning 11 of them. His only loss, his second season in the league against Bob Pettit and the St. Louis Hawks after he sprained his ankle and was limited. And oh, by the way, he retired at the age of 34. For perspective, Kareem was 42 when he retired and Wilt 38.